Natural disasters need no help from us to cause great tragedies, but they sure won't turn it down. People have been notorious for starting small fires that get out of control really fast and clear out whole forests. But what if it doesn't stop there and reaches the homes and families of loved ones? Today, we'll talk about what caused the great tragedy that is the Peshtigo Fire in Wisconsin. On October 8, 1871, a fire began in northeastern Wisconsin, also known as Peshtigo. It was massively overshadowed by the Great Chicago Fire that happened at the same time and occurred in a much more recognized city. But the Peshtigo Fire went down in history as a much deadlier disaster that deserves its time under the microscope. But what started the infamous fire, and to what extent was the devastation? Slash and burn is a method used by farmers to clear forest land and convert them into fields ripe for farming. It involves cutting down the vegetation, or a slash, and letting it dry, usually right before the rainiest days of the year. The slash is then burned, leaving a nutrient-rich ash that is used for creating fertile soil and eliminating weeds and pests. It's a method that has helped the farming and railroad community grow, making use of the forest they unfortunately have to cut down in their path. A cold front is a leading edge of a cooler mass of air at ground level that replaces warmer air. It's usually hundreds of miles long and has been the leading cause of some weather-based disasters discussed on this channel, with today's being no different. On the day of the slash and burn, a cold front came in from the west and started to fan the flames until they were brutally out of control, forming the natural phenomenon known as a firestorm. A firestorm is a large fire that attains such intensity that it creates and sustains its own wind system or storm force winds. It can create its own weather, sucking in oxygen with powerful drafts that can fuel the hungry fire. When a firestorm blows up in a forest like the Peshtigo fire did, it becomes nature's nuclear explosion. Wisconsin had been dealing with a particularly dry and prolonged drought that fall. From the forest spark, the firestorm used the aid of the drought to travel to the small village of Sugarbush, where it consumed every resident with temperatures exceeding 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it had made a quick meal of the village, the fire arrived without notice in Peshtigo and its neighboring towns. The fire was sucking in oxygen all around it. Anyone who tried to run would burst into flames before even knowing what was going on. Even those who sought safety in water were doomed, as several victims were found drowned in the nearby river. Three were even discovered in the town water tank, boiled to death when the fire consumed it. These people were caught off guard by a wall of rushing fire. They thought it was the end of the world. Some survivors reported that the firestorm created whirling tornadoes of fire that picked up and tossed rail cars into the air. Ever have a bad day? At least you're not dealing with a fire tornado. One horrific account reported that a man ended the lives of all of his children just to spare them from the agony of being burned alive. Another story talks of a man who thought he was carrying his wife to safety, but everyone was burned beyond recognition, so when he found out it wasn't her, he went insane. People died trapped in their homes before even having a chance to flee. It was truly a nightmare to experience. While the fire did the most damage to Peshtigo, consuming it in under an hour, it burned through 16 other towns. It burned 1.2 million acres of land and took the lives of over 2,200 people, making it the deadliest fire in U.S. history. Some sources say the fire jumped across the waters of Green Bay to Door, Pennsylvania, but upon further investigation, it's more likely the original fire sparked up another ground fire and spread into the new location instead of jumping across a lake. It changed the lives of all who witnessed it, described by locals as all hell riding into town on the back of a wind. 
It would take days for help to arrive, with the massive overshadowing of the Great Chicago Fire taking all the resources available to aid them. By the time they got to Peshtigo, there was nothing left, and no one to save. Peshtigo would rebuild, even if it took years to do so. Currently, there are about 3,500 people living there. It's a humble, quiet, Wisconsin town, which on the surface looks like nothing to note of, but they'll never forget the tragedy that took so many lives. Currently, there's a museum of the Peshtigo fire there, on the west of Highway 41, in case you want to remember the tragedy that's quickly being forgotten. Thanks for watching. For more true crime and horror, please consider subscribing. Game with me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, and as always, be well.